So three years ago, I left home for the first time to attend Harvard University's summer program. It wasn't camp, an exotic vacation, or one of those teen tours that the cool kids were going on, but it was a place that would introduce me to new subjects, in my case, journalism, and to see if I was up to the challenge of taking college-level courses. In the beginning, I wrote about products that I love and stores that I frequented. So to my amazement, my decision to attend Harvard was a complete life changer, both personally and professionally. My fashion blog, Style Solutions, was born at Harvard, and lo and behold, sparked the clear vision for me to pursue a profession in fashion media. So how did this all begin? In one of my classes, my professor Martha Biebinger told us that whoever wants to be a successful journalist in today's industry should have a blog. She gave us the task to either critique an existing blog or the challenge of creating our own. So after pulling my first all-nighter, and this was a pretty big deal considering I was only 16, and coming into class the next morning with many unfashionable-looking bags under my eyes, I was the only student who had created a blog. And this was kind of like my social network moment, and to my surprise, I heard that Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook in the same dorm that I had created Style Solutions. In the beginning, I wrote about products that I liked and stores that I frequented. But once I got back to New York City from Harvard, I looked at my hometown in a whole other light, a land of motivation, opportunity, and power. And I really wanted to motivate girls on how to dress, so I started posting pictures of myself and outfits, and that's kind of how that all began. Um, I was very motivated and probably a bit overconfident. Even a Harvard summer program does that to you because you're constantly surrounded by highly ambitious people who really think that they could do anything. And I truly did believe that. Um, but this did not set me up for the challenges and the criticism that I was about to face. Um, there would be people coming up to me saying, why are you posting pictures of yourself online? There would then be those random Facebook messages from people that I didn't even know criticizing my lifestyle and the way that I would dress. And then on top of it, there would be girls in the hallway that I actually knew telling me that my lipstick was paler than my skin. So it really goes to show that, you know, as the more successful you become, not everyone is going to be supportive. Um, and while this obviously could have really brought me down, and there were moments that it did, it really made me want to become stronger and come up with a twist that would differentiate my blog from the rest. I started becoming obsessed with reading fashion magazines like Vogue, InStyle and Glamour, and newspapers like the New York Post, which is my local read that I'm totally obsessed with. And I would start finding advertisements for celebrity personal appearances around New York. And I actually went to one of them, and it was for Rihanna. She was at a Barnes & Noble. I left school, went to do this, waited in line for hours, and after begging to just have a moment with her, little did I know did a two-simple quote interview with Rihanna lead to a complete interview series that I now post on my blog on a regular basis with celebrities, designers, and style. I started working with designers who just wanted me to basically wear clothes on my site for free. Um, I then started to cover Fashion Week for my blog and for the Daily Front Row, and um, this was really great because it gave me experience into the real world of journalism, and I even got locked backstage this summer interviewing Cody Simpson while I had my own column for the Daily Online called Live from LA, um, and I was doing this at night when I was working as an intern for Rachel Zoe during the day. Um, at the end of the day, you know, not everything's easy, and this is obviously the more glamorous side of what I do, but there are challenges, and rejection is one of the major things that I do face at times. Um, during my senior year of high school, I applied to be a video blogger for one of the major teen magazines, and I made it to the final round and had to create a video, which not only did I think was really great, but of course my family thought was great naturally. Um, and not only did I end up getting flat out rejected um, by the magazine, but I didn't even find out from them. I actually found out from a fellow contestant who commented on my video telling me that I should have won. So, goes to show, you really never know what's going to happen. And life really is all about ups and downs, but that's what I love. The challenge, the chase, and the ability that no matter how old we are, no matter where we come from or who we want to be, we have the ability to create our own future and destiny, and that's where I am today. So if you take something away from this talk, don't stop until you've crossed the finish line that you've defined. I'm still running, but I've learned to enjoy the experience along the way. 
So let it be fun and let it be exciting because it will be rewarding. My mom recently told me a story about how she was a magician, and yes, I said a magician, which is far from what she does for a living today. Um, and she was performing at one of her school talent shows, and there was a girl in the audience making fun of her, saying that she made a fool out of herself, and that she looked ridiculous because the black costume that she was wearing made her look like a penguin. And yeah, she cried to her mom, as I've done to her quite a few times, but at the end of the day, it made her a stronger person and a popular magician. <laughs> so now, whenever I face one of those difficult moments, I think of a penguin, and I smile with a knowing look on my face, and I continue to ignite my spark. So, thank you.